Welcome back to Frank Speaks. If this is your first time of coming to this very channel, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell for subsequent videos on this very channel. In this very video, tagged from scamming to justice, the rise and fall of Nigerian scam lord. There is a part one to this very video, already existing on this very channel, where we looked at the genesis and the movement of Hush Poppy into the world of scam. And in the part two of this very video, we tend to look at how Hush Poppy scammed his victims, the number of companies involved. In the part three of this same story, we're going to take you through the arrest processes, how he was caught and how the court cases actually went. At this point, let's jump straight into our discussion for the day. Raymond Abbas used his Instagram account to flaunt a luxurious lifestyle, but it had been funded by crime. The social media star is a prolific international fraudster who prosecutor says conspired to launder tens of millions of dollars stolen in various online scams. The Nigerian national was transferred to the US to be charged more than two years ago after his dramatic arrest by Dubai police during a raid on his home doctored operation Fox Hunt 2. Abbas pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to engage in money laundering in April of 2021, having targeted American and international victims with online scams. Don Alway, the assistant director in charge of the FBI's LA field office described the 40-year-old online celebrity as one of the most prolific money launderers in the world. He used his considerable following of around 2.8 million on Instagram to brag about the immense wealth he acquired by conducting business email compromise scams, online bank heists, and other cyber-enabled fraud. Some victims were left financially ruined and his operations even provided assistance to the North Korean regime, according to Mr. Alway, the Premier League club that was also affected. Abbas tried to steal 100 million pounds from an unidentified Premier League club in May of 2019, prosecutors say. He conspired with convicted Canadian money launderer Almarie 37 during the operation, which also targeted another British company. In connection with the scheme, Abbas provided his co conspirator with details for a bank account in Mexico that could handle millions and not block the North Korean regime. In January of 2019, Abbas and Alomari conspired to loan their funds stolen from a bank in Malta by providing account information for other banks in Romania and Bulgaria. The Malta cyber heist would allegedly have seen the funds headed for Penyang, and the US has also charged three North Korean hackers in connection with the crime. Abbas admitted the intended loss was $14.7 million, that is £12.8 million, which would have been part of the total £1.2 billion the hackers are accused of trying to steal from banks in a number of countries. Operation Top Dog Other schemes included Abbas fraudulently inducing a New York law firm to transfer more than $922,000, that is £804,000, to a fellow conspirator's account under someone else's name and attempting to defraud an individual in Qatar who wanted a $15 million loan to build a school. Among the luxuries Abbas spent his money on was a $230,000, that is £200,000, Richard Mills RM1103, which he regularly showed off on his Instagram account. His demise was the result of an FBI investigation called Operation Top Dog. U.S. Attorney Martin Estrada said, Abbas bragged on social media about his lavish lifestyle, a lifestyle funded by his involvement in international fraud and money laundering conspiracy targeting victims around the world. Money laundering and business email compromise scams are a massive international crime problem and we will continue to work with our law enforcement and international partners to identify and prosecute those involved wherever they may be. Alomari is serving a 140-month prison sentence and has been ordered to pay more than $30 million, that is £26.2 million, after admitting conspiracy to engage in money laundering in November of 2020. Mr. Andrew John Innocenti, who claims it to be a special agent working under the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the National Government of the United States, alleged in document that Instagram celebrity Hush Poppy received the fresh charges as U.S. prosecutors submitted court documents showing that he committed fraud and laundered over 400 k while in prison before his sentences. Meanwhile, an American cybercrime expert, Gary Wanner, debunked the circulating document saying that it is a fake and intended to get people to visit a scammer EIP website. 
According to Gary, the document they show is an edit of a June 2020 affidavit. The document claimed to have been presented before the United States District Court of California on Wednesday, 16th March of 2022, showed fresh evidence indicting Hush Poppy of committing fraud and money laundering in U.S. Federal Correctional Facility. The documents stated that Hush Poppy, while in U.S. Federal Correctional Facility, participated in the purchase and laundering of economic impact payment debit cards fraudulently obtained from stolen data of U.S. citizens and residents. Economic impact payment are financial support offered by the U.S. government to U.S. residents according to the CARES Act. One of the ways eligible U.S. residents receive their economic impact payments is by debit cards. The document also claimed that the United States authorities said that although prisoners have limited access to telephone, video, internet and computer use because of their rights to privacy in a court filing. Like the rest of the detainees, Hush Puppy was granted access to the computer network as well. If I read that, however, between January 28 and March 4th of 2020, security authorities at a federal prison in the United States noticed that Hush Puppy was using the internet most often and a dedicated system was set up for him and his activities were recorded for seven days. And it also alleged that it was found that Hush Puppy was actively buying EIP debit cards from an underground cyber criminal marketplace called Stimulus Card. While being recorded, Hush Puppy bought a total of 58 EIP debit cards with a total value of $429,800 on the site and learned that the money through one AJ, the Hush Puppy saga, was a trendy story that many people had shared severally on different social media platforms around the world and it had also generated a lot of controversies. However, we needed to ask ourselves a very important question about this story. Why is it that so many victims fell for the scam? The answer is simple because the defraud that victims had led to no knowledge about the business email compromise BEC scam, which was the strategy used by Raymond Abbas, aka Hush Poppy. What is a business email compromise? BEC, as it is known, is a kind of fraud in which cyber criminals hack into a corporate email account and impersonate the real owner of the email account in order to lure the company, its employees, partners, or customers into transferring money or sensitive information to the cyber criminals or divert their payment to another account created by the cyber criminals. This is how it works. The cyber criminals would do thorough research about the unsuspected companies through their profiles website, social media posts, YouTube channels, journals, press releases, among others. Alternatively, they will create an email address that is very similar to that of this unsuspected company's email address. In some cases, they will disguise themselves as the director, partner, lawyer or customer of the targeted companies and use their identity to obtain personal or sensitive information through email. Research revealed that BEC fraud had already cost the United States businesses at least $1.6 billion in losses from 2013 till date. A typical example of a BEC was reported in the news and had gone viral on social media with thousands of views within days of its report. In the report, a 40-year-old Ramon Nabaz, aka Hush Poppy, was arrested along with 11 others by the Dubai police. They were accused of being involved in a BEC and other forms of internet fraud in which 1,926,400 victims were said to have been targeted by the syndicates. The major reason why so many unsuspected individuals and companies fell victim to a BEC fraud almost every day is that they lack the vital information about it. It comes with a sense of urgency, for example, urgent payment, urgent response, urgent subject matter, among others. The fraudsters want their victim to respond quickly before they can think clearly. Sudden change in email address, for example, when you notice a sudden change in the email address of the CEO, customer, lawyer, or staff of the company you're dealing with, be suspicious. Sudden change in website. When you notice a change in the website of any company before, during or after a transaction, you should be suspicious. Sudden change in contact telephone number. Sudden change in bank account details. Introduction of third-party email into the business transaction. And here is how to avoid BEC fraud. Individuals and companies should educate themselves on how to avoid BEC scams when a change in an email address, phone number, bank account details, website, etc. is noticed. 
report immediately to your bank or anti-fraud agencies. Always use firewall antivirus and other tools to scan your computers, mobile phones, and other devices to prevent malware infections. Before you provide any sensitive, personal, or company information on any website, make sure you verify the authenticity of the website. If you receive an email that notifies you of a change in the mode of payment or a change of bank account details, make sure you investigate thoroughly by contacting the supposed receiver of the payment via any other channel, phone calls, and courier services. If you're a victim of a BEC scam, report immediately to appropriate authorities for urgent action, like your bank, police, or anti-crime organization. A new twist into the $1.1 million hush puppy internet scam involving suspected commander of the Nigerian Police Intelligence Response Team, DCP Abakiari, and fraudster Raymond Abbas, aka Hush Puppy, and other accomplices emerged with the Office of the Attorney General issuing a new legal advice exonerating Kiari. The linkage of Abakiari to this whole issue of Hush Puppy. There was a new twist into the $1.1 million Hush Puppy internet scam involving suspended commander of the Nigerian Police Intelligence Response Team, DCP Abakiari, and fraudster Raymond Abbas, aka Hush Puppy. An other accomplice emerged with the Office of the Attorney General issuing new legal advice exonerating Kiari from the money laundering allegations. The Office of the AGF which in its first legal advice admitted that a prima facie case of the money laundering of the 33 payment proceedings of crime was established by the DIG Joseph Ebunike led special investigation panel against Kiari has now said there are no links with Kiari following further investigation. Recall that Kiari and other defendants are currently in court on drugs and money laundering allegations at the Federal High Court. The new legal advice with reference number DPPA slash LA slash 814 slash 21. Written on behalf of the AGF by the Director of Public Prosecutions, Ministry of Justice, Mohamed Abubakar, emphasized that the evidence contained in the case, Diary had no link between DSP Abakiari and Hush Puppy. He said the evidence contained in the case, Diary, was not sufficient to indicate or show that the said monies, 279 million naira, were laundered directly or indirectly by Kiari to disguise the original item that the police report on the investigation failed to probe the gaps identified in their investigation by the AGF's office. The advice titled, Forwarding of the Investigation Report of the Nigerian Police Force Special Investigation Team and Request for Legal Advice with Regards to the Allegations of Criminal Conspiracy Aiding and Abating Internet Fraud, Wire Fraud, Identity Theft and Money Laundering against DCP Abakiari was addressed to AGP Usman Al-Kalibaba. It reads, I am directed to inform you that after a careful study of the said response wherein you stated that the monies had been traced to Zenit Bank account belonging to Usman Ibrahim Waziri, Guarantee Trust Bank account belonging to Adekoye Sikiru, Zenit Bank account belonging to Husseini Allah and other funds went to Sharon Festus. The monies were withdrawn and utilized by the aforementioned account holders and the lady. It is in our view that the above response has not linked the suspect DCP Abakiari to the offense of money laundering as the evidence contained in the case diary is not sufficient to indicate or show that the said monies were laundered directly or indirectly by Kiari to disguise their origin. More so that the aforementioned recipient or receivers exonerated him in their statement as having nothing to do with the monies. Consequently, the agent GF's office advised the IGP and the police management to explore their internal force disciplinary organs against Kiari through the Police Service Commission, which is constantly empowered to carry out disciplinary functions for breaching the code of conduct for a law enforcement officer by hobnobbing with suspected fraudsters and people of questionable means in his capacity as a senior officer and head of the IRT. In the new advice, the AGF's office added that DCP Kiari was also liable to be sentenced for violating the social media policy of the police by responding to the Federal Bureau of Investigation indictments on Facebook, breaching the police code of the professional ethics by acting on complaints without rescue to establish protocols for detaining a suspect, Vincent Chibuzo, for over a month without a valid court order and regards to his fundamental human rights 
recall that following the rejection of the internal ICP report submitted by the police headquarters to the Police Service Commission based on the illegal advice of the AGF's office, the force headquarters was directed to carry out a new investigation and submit its new findings on February 25th, but this was not done. Hush Puppy's partner, Woodbury, to pay $8 million after pleading guilty to fraud. Hush Puppy's associate, Woodbury, jailed for eight years. A Nigerian fraud star, Jacob Olalekon, also known as Woodbury, was sentenced to eight years in prison by the federal judge in the United States. Woodbury was convicted of one count of wire fraud and one count of money laundering after he admitted to defrauding a business of over $15 million. Woodbury, who was arrested in 2020, was a close associate of Raymond Abbas, aka Hush Poppy. Another Nigerian fraudster, Woodbury and Abbas were known for their elaborate fraud schemes, which involved targeting businesses and individuals around the world. In Woodbury's case, he would pose as a legitimate businessman and contact potential victims, offering them investment opportunities. One, the victims agreed to invest, Woodbury would then disappear with their money. In addition to his prison sentence, Woodbury would also be ordered to pay restitution to the victim of his fraud schemes. He would also be deported to Nigeria after he completes his sentence. And this is the much that we have for you on the part 2 of this very video. The part 3 will be coming up pretty soon where we look at the arrest of Hush Puppy and his current situation in prison. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell before leaving.